Hey guys, I'm Nate Hosey and today I'm going to talk to you about situational calling in the turkey woods and how I approach each hunt. Growing up in the mountains of Pennsylvania, you know, I've been hunting since I've been five years old and started out over bird dogs with my dad and my grandfather. And we'd be hunting for pheasants and grouse and woodcock and then they introduced me into deer hunting and would be spending time with my grandpa chasing whitetails. But it wasn't until I was about 12 or 13, when I was 12, I was introduced to turkey hunting. I went on a fall hunt with my man Buzz and connected on my first fall turkey. But after that, I think I was 13, my neighbors, Butch Maltesi and Bob Casella, they introduced me to spring turkey hunting. And I mean, I was hooked immediately. The first time I heard a turkey gobble in the tree, he gets down, you hear that interaction. And it was the first time at a young age, I can remember saying, man, like, Deer hunting, you know, it's so defensive. You're set up, you're waiting, and not that you can't make moves and, and try different things, but majority of the time, it's, you're defensive. You're waiting on that buck to show up. Where turkey hunting, this felt so offensive to me, and like, we were on the offense, we were making moves, we were circling on this turkey, trying to get to where we needed to, to bring him to us. And just the interaction, just the, really, it's an art of working a turkey, I mean, I just fell in love with. And I can remember listening to that turkey gobble, and. Butch Yelpin and, and Bob Yelpin and everybody in that conversation, it just, it just hooked me immediately. And, and honestly, I mean, for a lack of better terms, I, I became obsessed with turkey hunting. So I started buying every turkey call that I could possibly find, box calls, slate calls, glass calls, tube calls, you know, any kind of call you can find, mouth, mouth calls, and I've done it all, honestly. I've, I've called terribly, I've called good, I've called everywhere in between, I've called too much, I've called too little. I have made every mistake that a turkey hunter could possibly make when it comes to calling. But as you grow and as you learn and as you go through different scenarios, you start to you know, slowly figure out what works. And once you start trying to figure out you know, what you're doing wrong or what that turkey in a particular situation is wanting to hear or what the situation allows for, and you start to get a little bit better at singing that love song and understanding the art of calling a turkey, um, things start to become a little bit more clear as to what's going to bring you success. I mean, I can remember some of the greatest lessons I learned on turkey calling. You know, I would say all of my greatest lessons come from live turkeys. I'd be going out on dates with uh, Tiffany, my wife now, my girlfriend at the time, and I'd see a flock of turkeys run down, bust them up, and we'd sit down at a tree, and i call them back in and just practice my calling, listen to their cadence, listen to their tone. And there is no better teacher than a live hen. It helps you understand her rhythm and you know how to be fluid in your calling and how sometimes uh, we have the mindset that in order to kill a turkey, it has to be perfect. And in my opinion, that couldn't be further from the truth. The imperfections in calling, in my opinion, is what adds a lot of realism. When you watch a hen walk through the woods, she may be hitting perfect on every note, cow, 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 cow. But a lot of times, if you're paying attention to the way they walk, a lot of times she's communicating, but she's also, you know, she might be feeding, she might be listening, she's walking, so there's a lot of hesitation and up and down in her cadence. So she might come out and She's up and down because she's listening also to whether that gobbler's responding or if she's trying to communicate with another hen. So there's a lot of imperfections in their cadence sometimes. And I always tell people, to try to listen to those imperfections, add it to your calling routine, because the more realism you bring to the scenario, the more successful you're gonna be at punching a, a tag. Um, when you look at situational type calling, obviously, to an extent, every situation is gonna be a little bit different, except for the fact that your majority of the time, you're gonna start out in the morning, hopefully you got one, gobbling on the roost, you're getting ready to work them, and Lord willing, he hits the ground and at least does something. Uh, to give you a little bit of conversation or give you a little bit of excitement for the morning anyways. And my routines in the morning, uh, depending on the situation, all start out pretty much the same. When I'm calling to a turkey, first thing in the morning, if he's gobbling in the tree, the first thing that I want to do is I want to hit him with some tree yelps. The tree yelps are basically me just saying, good morning. Now, I'm going to start super low at first, so low that I'm thinking he might hear me, but he might not but I'm gonna start low because she's just waking up. Maybe she's pruning herself a little bit. She's, she's stretching her wings out a little bit. She's waking up in the tree. This isn't necessarily to get his attention, but I wanna see if by doing this, I'm creating a situation, a scenario in my head that I've seen before of a hen in a tree. I'm gonna create this scenario and I'm gonna see if he reacts to it. So 
I'm gonna start real low, most of the time on a mouth call, and I'm gonna start real low with some soft tree yelps. If he responds to it, great. I'm gonna give him maybe another series after that. If he doesn't respond to it, then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna wait a little bit, and then I'm gonna call just a little bit louder on the next series, and at this point, now I'm saying, yeah, I'm still waking up over here, but now I really wanna make sure that he hears it a little bit. So I'll get a little bit louder. If he hits it, okay, well now I know he's at least semi-interested in what I have to say. So my next series, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna run probably, you know, I might throw a little bit louder series and maybe a cut or two at the end, just to, just to add a little snap. And let's see how he hits when he hears that snap. And if he comes back hard, well, now I'm thinking we might be in the game once he hits the ground. He at least has interest in what I'm saying. Most of the time I'm running that, not that it has to be on a mouth call, that could be with your friction call, it could be a box call, slate call, whatever you, you're comfortable running. Um, that's just how I approach that situation. When it comes to you know, mid-morning type calling, once they get down, if he doesn't work right in out of the tree, you know, I'm basically being a hen. I'm creating these scenarios, like I said, that I have seen before over and over again. I'm, I'm walking around, I'm feeding, I'm, I'm yelping, I'm getting to high points where I can let the volume of my calls carry and reach as many ears as possible where I think that I might be able to strike one and then make a move in on them. But the calling scenario remains about the same. I'm not, when I'm locating, I would say that I will up the volume on my calling a little bit, but for the most part, I try to keep my calling not super loud. A hen in the woods, every now and then you get those, those hens that are just cranking. You know, she's just cranking. Boss hen rolls up in there and she is just cranking. But majority of the time, hens are not very loud. And, and they're not doing a lot of louds. Their cadence may adjust. She may get a faster cadence to her yelping, but her volume isn't always changing. Again, like I said, every now and then you get those boss hens that roll up in there and they just wanna make sure they're heard or she's upset, she's angry, that there's another lady up in her turf. She's coming in to fight for her man and get, to get this other lady's attention. Um, but most of the time, these turkeys are not super loud. So in the mid mornings, I switch to, a, if I'm out searching, begging and pleading as we call it, you know, trying to get a turkey to, to strike, I will, uh, I will definitely add some volume, but try to still stay to as realistic as I can be. Again, creating these scenarios. As you go into the afternoon, depending on where you are in the country, if you're dealing with some hot temperatures, in my opinion, sometimes in the afternoon, those turkeys, they'll get in the shady spots, down those creek bottoms in the pines, and uh, you know they'll kind of hole up in there. So again, at that point, I'm creating the same kind of situations to where I'm trying to get his attention, but I'm also trying to just be a hen that's out enjoying her day. I'm doing what hens do. In seminars, I often talk about the idea of calling through a turkey. And what I mean by that is once you start working one or once you strike one, I'm still creating a hen situation in my head. So just because that gobbler is answering me, I hear him answering me, but I'm not basically keeping my calls only to his response. So what I mean by that, a lot of people, they'll say, hey, um, this turkey's cut me off, he's fired up. And there's a lot of truth to that. But when, I'm, when I hear him cut me off, I'm gonna continue with my cadence through him. I'm gonna continue calling because what I want him to think or believe is I'm doing, this is a tale as old as time. Us fellas know this tale very well, it's called hard to get. And what I wanna do is I wanna create this scenario that she is not, maybe she's not talking to him. Yeah, I hear him gobbling and, and he hears me, but now in me calling right through him, I want to try to create the situation that is that hen yelping to me or, you know, hey, honey, I'm answering you over here, but, you know, the louder I call or the more I call through him, maybe that pulls him my way because, again, I'm just creating a situation and a scenario that I have seen before. Now, if you want to come be a part of it, we're right here, we're set up and ready, but I'm going to call basically to be as realistic as I can, can be and not as much to how he's answering. Now, on the flip side of that, I am paying attention to how he's answering. So it's kind of a double-edged sword because as you do it a lot and as you get the opportunity to call to a lot of turkeys, you start to be able to read them a little bit better. You start to be able to understand their temperament and their, their mood a little bit better by the way he's gobbling. You know, is he a turkey that's fired up and you think, man, this one could be one of those ones that's over in just a few minutes or is he, is he kind of reluctant? Is it one that's gonna take some time? You know, you gotta back off him a little bit. Let him get curious and make his way to the, to, down to you? Or is he one that just doesn't have any interest in you? And in those situations, I mean, I don't care who it is calling. Sometimes he just doesn't want, you know, to come over and hang out that day and you're gonna have to wait till the next day. But all of these situations, 
the biggest thing I can tell you when it comes to situational type calling is always one thing that I bring to each scenario is realistic approach. I want to be a hen that I've heard. I want to be a hen that I've seen. And I want to create a scenario that I've been a part of before. So although the scenarios may be different, my approach is always coming in as a lifelike hen. Um, afternoon hunting too, as I was saying in the mornings, we talked about kind of upper, uh, like up in the middle of the day type hunting. In the afternoons, a lot of times you find these turkeys get fired back up. Even if they kind of quiet down throughout the afternoon, they'll get fired back up before they head to roost, you know, because they're looking to get together before they get up in the tree. A lone gobbler might be trying to find some hens before he goes to roost. So I might get a little bit more aggressive at that point and, um, you know, maybe cut down a little bit more. And, and there's always moments, you know, you get in a pretty hard woods bottom or something and it, it echoes real nice. There's always moments I want to throw some cuts or utilize my friction calls and, and, and get a little bit loud. Really, like I said, going back to the begging and pleading, let's see if we can't get one to strike in here. Um, so some of the calls that I run throughout, you know, and, and some of these scenarios that I create, I'll start with just a mouth call, like, you know, basically just some simple stuff. And, you know, without getting too crazy or too out of control with this, I'll just give you some, some hen sounds that I'll make in my setups. So that's a little bit of yelping on my mouth call that I'll do. And again, the way I manipulate the sound, and you'll see there's kind of some up and downs in the cadence, some snaps, some cuts, some clucks. And that's basically what I'm, my approach each time I'm going in there. I'm reading what he's liking. Is he liking the way I'm yelping? Is he liking soft yelping? Does he like cuts when you cut at him? Or, or is he just liking that little stuff that you're doing? Sometimes, you know, those little one note whines that you could throw out there, one note clucks and stuff, to a turkey that may be call shy or it, possibly have been beat up in a fight or something or he's just reluctant to come, sometimes that little stuff will get his attention the best and have him, you know, maybe break down into your setup. Um, another call that I like to use a lot, obviously, this is a glass call and I really like these mid-morning, uh, afternoon, anytime that I'm trying to locate, I can get a little bit more volume out of these. You can hear it's got a lot more volume. You can carry a little better. And you also can get some different tones depending on what, what kind of striker you use uh, in the current situation, but you get a little bit of change. You can hear So I really like running this call, especially you get out, you know, mid-morning, or after they're out of the roost, if maybe he's gone quiet on you, if, if I'm trying to find a turkey, or mid-morning when I'm out trying to locate, that's one of the go-tos. Again, when I'm mouth yelping, I really try as hard as I can not to run my mouth call super loud. And I also don't really locate with it that much unless we're in an area where I feel like it can be heard really well. Most of the time when I'm locating, I'm locating with these friction calls. Obviously, a call we all know, a box call. You know, simple call to run, great call, effective call, legendary in a lot of ways. Just simple yup. Throw some cuts in. Got a great sound to a great locating call. This call, a lot of you may not know what it is. Some of you will. This is called a cut box and my neighbor Butch Malatesi made this for me when I was in high school. That's also who taught me how to turkey call. So this call is legendary to me and has been extremely effective all over the country. Up in Pennsylvania, a lot of times when you're working these mountains and you're working these hills, you're covering a lot of ground and you're trying to call to a lot of ground. 
This call has been unbelievable up in those hills as far as getting a lot of distance. Now it's loud and up close and you know, any of these calls as far as being this close to the camera, you may not be able to hear uh, the tones of them perfectly and it might be a little bit much, but you'll be able to hear for the most part the cadence and stuff of this. So basically all you do is it has two pieces, you put one in your hand just like this, and then you bring this piece and you bring it back towards your body. It's called a cut box. And this thing, a lot of times, on days that I can't find a turkey that wants to gobble, I can find one with this. So you just run. And if you really want to get out there and really carry a lot of distance on a yelp, So just a super cool call that has been with me since high school. And my man Butch, like I said, this is a special call to me um, and, and one that's been extremely effective. So when you're looking at scenarios and situations, like I said, all of them will be different to an extent. But my suggestion to you, and again, I don't know everything. We're, I've said it before, I mean, when it comes to pro hunters or anything like that, I'm, I, I don't believe there are. We're all hunters out here just trying to share some tips and tactics to help each other be better out there in the woods. But through my experience in the turkey woods, I, I can honestly say I like to start slow and low. Like I kind of take my time and try to read that turkey, see what exactly he wants and enjoy that conversation. And what I love the most about turkey hunting is no matter what you got on your mind, no matter what might be stressing you out or what things might be bothering you, when you're in the turkey woods and when you're a turkey hunter and when you get lost in that conversation with a gobbler, to me, there is nothing like it. Um, back in when I was a kid, as a joke, they used to call me the turkey slayer in my town. Because I used to take everybody from all my buddies, the principal, anybody that wanted to go, I'd like to take. And I was addicted to it like I am today, but I'm not addicted to just killing a turkey. It's, it, it goes well beyond killing a turkey. Each situation, each calling situation and scenario that I get into is the ability to get lost in that conversation and just enjoy the communication between you and that long beard. And for me, since I've been a kid, there is nothing that has captivated me in the woods like working a big old long beard and, and just working them into your setup with your calls or calling them up for your buddy or your family, or your wife, your kids, whatever, whoever it is that you're out with. So, you know, with each scenario that you approach, um, you know, and, and I wanna, I, if I could say anything, is enjoy it, appreciate it. Go in with the right mindset, I'm gonna take this turkey out or I'm gonna give everything I can trying, one way or the other, but enjoy it, enjoy that conversation, enjoy the art of working a turkey. In today's fast-paced world of turkey hunting, you know, it's funny, uh, me and a few of my buddies who, who love it, it's, it's interesting all the new rules now that, that uh, make you a turkey hunter. You know, when I was growing up, it was just somebody who loved to be out in the woods, and to me, that's who it is. If you enjoy being out there in the woods and you're chasing turkeys, you're a turkey hunter. But in today's world of social media, sometimes you hear what you need to be shooting if you're gonna be a turkey hunter, um, what you need to be using, how you need to be using it. And uh, my outlook on those kind of situations is whatever is legal within your state, within your state, no matter what you choose to do, you use all legal means to make you successful by the rules and regulations that the state allows. And enjoy it. But like I said, my one piece of advice, advice is every situation, every scenario you find yourself in, whether you use decoys or you don't, take some time to understand the art of working a turkey, of learning how to call, of watching a long beard get hung up and, and you finally break them because you know you pulled out your call that your buddy made for you in high school or you finally worked all summer, you got this mouth call going, then you ran it in the fall and once deer season was over, you're super excited and man, you get out there in the spring woods and you, you call in your first long beard for yourself or for your buddy or for your friend. And um, if you haven't tried it, I know that you will love it. So hopefully today with some of these scenarios, some of the things I've talked about, uh, it helps you along the way. If, if you're a, somebody who's been doing it a long time, I wish you all the best in the woods. If somebody you're just getting ready to get started, uh, I can tell you, you, you're in for a treat because there is nothing like a turkey goblin in the spring turkey woods. And I know that I wish you guys the best, hunt them up out there, and hopefully some of these calling scenarios that I had discussed today uh, will help you guys punch a tag. Good luck to you out there, hunt them up.